the Sri Lanka won the one-day series against England yesterday and the final game, the decider, was no short of controversy just like the previous four games. The man in question was again the Sri Lankan off spinner Sachitra Sananayaka and he's having a terrible last 10 days, isn't he? He was first criticised heavily in the English media, was booed by the English crowd for allegations of chucking the ball while bowling the Dusra and now in the final game he was again in the news, was again booed by the English crowd because he ran out Joe's Butler at the non-striker's end. Now for those of you who didn't get a chance to see this game, this is what happened. Sananaika was bowling, Jordan was the striker, Butler was a non-striker. Butler took a start at the non-striker's end, went outside the crease even before Sananaika had released the ball. Sananaika noticed this and knocked off the base at the non-striker's end, appealed for a run out and thus Butler had to go back to the pavilion after the umpire raised his finger. Now, whenever there has been an incident of monkering in cricket, a lot of controversy has originated out of it and the baller in question has been heavily criticised every time. He's, faced, he's found some support in the form of some ex-players, but the general trend is that the baller is wrong when a batsman is monkered in. Now, why does, why does monkering cause such a big controversy in cricket? And to answer this question, two things have to be considered. Is monkering legal? And number two, is monkering, if legal, against the spirit of the game? And to answer the first question of whether it is legal, According to the amendment which the ICC had made in 2011 in its rule book, a bowler has the right to run out a batsman at the non-striker's end if he has not released the ball or if he has not completed his usual delivery swing. And in this case, Sananaika had done neither and was within his rights to run out Butler because he was outside his crease. So, it's perfectly legal, it's perfectly fine. And now the second question, is it according to the spirit of the game? Now, consider this situation. Sachin Tendulkar is batting. He drives the ball in the air, is caught at cover and the rule book states that says Sachin is out. So when it comes to monkering, why should a monkering decision be against the spirit of the game? Because the rule book states that if a batsman does X, Y, Z, he is out. Just like when he's caught and in the case of monkering, when he's outside his crease at the non-striker's end, the baller knocks off the bails. According to the rule book, it's out. So, the spirit of the game should be irrelevant in this situation and even if it's considered, it's not against the spirit of the game because the rule book clearly states that a batsman who's left his crease even before the baller has bowled can be run out. And when the ICC amend, um, amended its rules in 2011, it clearly sent a message to the batsman to be inside the crease until the baller has released the ball. And if we consider the spirit of the game, the Sri Lankan players had actually warned both Chris Jordan and Joe's Butler of not going outside the crease before the baller had released the ball. They had not heeded the advice and the Sananaika was within his rights, both legally and in terms of the spirit of the game, to run out Joe's butler. So, I feel I'm with the Sri Lankan players here because they were within their rights. And now let's go into a piece of trivia now. When was monkering first used? What's the origin of this term? Now, it was first used way back in the 1930s when India was touring Australia. And this, a similar situation had occurred. We knew Mankad was the Indian bowler. He was coming into ball. Bill Brown, the Australian, was a non-striker. He had taken a start, had gone outside the crease. Munker had knocked off the bales, had appealed. The batsman was going back to the pavilion because the umpire had ruled him out. Even then, the Indian players had warned Australia before of not coming outside the crease before the ball had released the ball. They had not heeded the advice, just like Butler, and he was run out. So, that's the origin of the term monkering, and it has been used several times since then. There have been lots of instances of monkering. And the latest one, if we don't consider the one yesterday, was in 1992 when Kapil Dev and ran out a batsman at the non-striker's end. It's time to say goodbye now. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and thank you very much. Stay tuned for many more. Thank you.